Paul's letter to the Colossians and introduction. Located near the upper end of the Cycus Valley, Colossae lay approximately 100 miles east of Ephesus in Asia Minor. Nearby sat Laodicea, the chief city of the district. Most of the residents of Colossae were native Phrygians. A strong Greek influence manifests itself through the prevailing Greek language and customs. The background. This epistle indicates Paul did not have found this church, possibly never visited it. Nevertheless, it was probably started by one of his converts, Epaphras, who was uh, as a result of uh, Paul's work in Ephesus. The membership of the Colossian church primarily consisted of all Gentiles, 127 to 13. There were Jewish Christians among them. However, for reference in the epistle, it indicates that the readers were quite familiar with Jewish customs and teachings. Paul's main purpose was he sought to stabilize the saints to confirm their belief in the gospel that they had received. Secondly, he desired to crush the heretical teaching that were arising in Colossae and he wanted to teach concerning the Christian life. There were many of these heretical teachings uh, which were prevalent in uh, Colossae. Apparently, it was a blending of various religious systems with Jewish elements, oriental mystic beliefs and early forms of Gnostic speculations. Outline of this letter. The letter to the Colossians has four chapters. First is the introduction, verses 1 to 14, chapter 1. And the three important parts is the preeminence of uh, Christ, Colossians 1, uh, 15 to 29. That is his deity, chapter 1, verses uh, 15 to 19, his uh, death, chapter 1, verses 20 to 22, and his demands, chapter 1, verses 23 to 29. The second part is combating the heresy, Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 to 23. Experience uh, through chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, and chapter... 2 verses the 8 to 23 that is exposing the error. Third part, life of the Christian. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to chapter 4 verses 6. Based on our relationship with God, uh, chapter 3 verses 1 to 17. Our relationship with other chapter 3 verses 18 to chapter 4 verses 6. And then there is a conclusion, chapter 4 verses uh, 7 to 18. The misconception in the Colossian heresy, the denial of the deity of Christ, created a being uh, below the angels which elevated, is not external, God did not create the world directly but by series of uh, emanations. Christ is supreme. He is the deity 15 and 19. He is in creation 15 to 17. He is in the church 18 and he is uh, also the for the sinners that is 20 to 23. Colossians and Ephesians are two disputed letters of Paul which contain highly developed Christian pre-creation rhetorolect. Colossians speaks of pre-creation Christ as the image of God, as Ephesians speaks of Christ as the mystery and plan of God before the ages. So another outline of Colossians will be first his thankfulness in uh, verse uh, 1 to 14 chapter 1, then the person work of Christ verse 1, 15 to 23 work as a servant verse chapter 1 uh, verse 24 to chapter 2 verse uh, 5, fullness of life in Christ chapter 2 verses 6 uh, to 19, dying and living with Christ chapter 2 verses 20 to chapter 3 verses 4 the old life and the new life chapter 3 verses 5 to 17 and personal relationship chapter 3 verses 18 to chapter 4 verses 5 and christian encouragement chapter 4 verses 7 to 18 colossians 1 15 to 23 presents the preeminence of christ his relationship to god in uh, verse 15 and 19 relationship to creation verses uh, 15 to 17 with respect to the creation, he is the firstborn of every creature, verse 15. In him all things were created, verse 16. By him all things were created, verse 16. For him all things were created, verse 16. Before all things, verse 17. And by him all things consist, verse 17. Christ is the beginning of creation, end of creation, the power who holds creation together. He is the creator, the sustainer and the final goal. Christ with respect to the church, verse 18. He is the head of the body, he has authority. He is the beginning, the source and origin. And he is the firstborn from the dead by his resurrection. Christ is also important for the sinner, for his redemption. This Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23 presents doctrinal truth that Jesus Christ is God, Jesus Christ creator of things, Jesus Christ sustainer of all things, Jesus Christ the head of the church, Jesus Christ the reconciliator of all things and Jesus Christ the supreme Lord, Jesus Christ is the sufficient saviour. Another outline to Colossians is being complete in Christ. We have firstly the summary of the person of Christ in verse uh, 1, 1, then we have the 2 verse 2, 5 and the supremacy of our position in Christ verses 2, 6 to verses 2, 23, then the primacy of our practice of Christ's likeness verses 3, 1 to verses 3, 17 and then we have supremacy of our uh, relationships in Christ verses 3, 18 to verses 4, 18. But there are warnings that uh, don't be distracted from Christ verses 2, 4. Don't be legalistic, verses 2.20. Don't be tempted by your old life, verses 3, 
five to seven and don't abuse your relationship verses four five to six then the key verses in each part are he is also the head of the ch- body the church he is the beginning the first born from the dead so that in himself might come to have first place in everything verse 118 the supremacy of position in christ the key verse is 213 that and when you were dead in your transgression and circumcision of your flesh he made you alive together with him having forgiven us of all sins for the third part the supremacy of our practice of christ likeness the key verse is 32 set your mind on the things above not on the things of this earth supremacy of relationship in christ key verses was 4 6 let your speech always be with grace seasoned as it were with salt so that you may know how you should respond to each person so the first uh, part uh, is basically doctrine of christ and then the application of christ the main theme is completeness in christ for in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form and in him you have been made complete and he is the head over all rule and authority verse uh, 2:9 to 10 The author of this letter is Saint Paul written around 61 to 63 AD the key words are faith a faithful complete and forgiven place is from Rome in his prison and recipient is church at Colosse Another outline of the Colossians uh, book is that uh, Christ is our lord our life in Christ and our love uh, for one another Christ is the lord of creation he is lord of the church he is the lord of the ministry So this is chapter one. Chapter two is Christ, Lord of our work. He is the Lord of our salvation, Lord of our growth. Chapter two, then our life in Christ, our mind, body, attitude, and actions in Christ. Uh, chapter three, and our love for each other is love for outsiders, uh, and love for believers. Chapter four. So there are main uh, in instructions, ra- warnings, exhortations, and reminders. In the first part, uh, Christ is our Lord. He is person and his work. is important whereas in our life and our uh, love for others his peace and his presence is with us our main emphasis in christ is our lord is doctrinal and corrective whereas our emphasis in our life and in our love for others is practical and reassuring the main theme in the entire book is christ is our supreme lord and a sufficient savior the key verse is 2 9 to 10 Christ in uh, Colossians is a supreme lord of the church and the world and the all sufficient savior in whom the fullness of deity dwells verse 1 13 to 20 and verse 2 9 the letter to the colossians is very purpose we know your circumstance and comfort your hearts with uh, onimus a faithful beloved brother who is one of you and they will make known to you all things that are happening here the epistle addition to the epistles of ephesians the philippians and philemon constitute captivity letters uh, referring to the epistle that saint paul wrote during the captivity in rome Characteristic of this epistle is of great importance with respect to Christian theology. It talks extensively divinity of Christ, explains excellence of the person of Christ over anyone. That He is all in all points out without doubt the redemptive work of Christ. There is also a great resemblance between this epistle of Colossians and the epistle to the Ephesians. Both these epistles were sent from Rome by Tychicus uh, during Saint Paul's first imprisonment. There, it is very rare to find a verse in Colossians that does not have a similar verse in Ephesians. Almost seventy-eight uh, of ninety-five uh, verses of the epistle to the Colossians have similar expressions in Ephesians. It is noticeable that both the epistles have verses difficult to understand. Example uh, of uh, com- comparative verses are: In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. Colossians one fourteen. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to riches of His grace. Ephesians one seven. Both epistles agree on the underlying message. That is, it seems that Paul is writing. His mind was full of uh, contemplation on glory and majesty of the person of Christ as he lengthened his writing, explaining the subject along with the great mystery of the divine grace that was kept in secret from old. That God intentioned to gather all that is in heaven and on earth into one holy family under head that is Christ, thereby abolishing wall between Jews and Gentiles. So that God's kingdom, Christ is all in all. So the comparative uh, verses are. where there is neither greek nor jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave nor free but christ is all in all and in all colossians 3:11 whereas the comparative verse ephesians 2:14 and 15 for in himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation having abolished in his flesh the enmity therefore it, it is very necessary for saint paul to write the letter to correct the thoughts and keep the church from dangerous beliefs and heresies that were going on direct uh, their attention to the all sufficient and preeminent savior for he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the first born from the dead that in all things he may have preeminence verse 118 
secondly to encourage them to unite with their lord in all aspects of life heeding to faith and not human philosophy as you therefore have received christ jesus the lord so walk in him rooted and built up in him established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving verse 2 6 and 7 he warns them from holding fast to teachings and tradition that are according to men so let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or sabbaths which are a shadow of things to come but the substance is christ chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 the theme of this epistle is christ is the head of the church it is a christo centric letter and it is considered one of the most epistle that focuses on our lord jesus and his work in us uh, last time we see the content of the epistle to the colossian we have the introduction in chapter 1 the apostolic greetings to the saints and faithful brethren in christ and colossi grace to and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ then thanksgiving and praise we give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints 1 3 2 4 the second part is a doctrinal part in chapters 1 and 2 that is the firstly the preeminence of Christ in chapter 1 he is the redeemer he delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of his love colossians 1 13 Next is Christ is the creator he is the image of the invisible god the first born of all creation colossians 1:15 to 17 The third point is we are reconciled in Christ for it is pleased the father that in him all the fullness should dwell and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him whether things on earth or things in heaven having made peace through the blood of his cross verse 1:19 to 20 Point four is a sacrificial service for Christ, and I rejoice in my suffering for you, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking the affliction of Christ for the sake of His body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to from you to me to fulfill the word of God. Colossians one twenty four to twenty five. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all. Resisting the false teaching in chapter two. Firstly, not to follow human philosophy, but Christ, who is the true wisdom, in whom are all hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. Colossians two three to four. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility. Then there is about worship of angels, intruding into those things which we have not seen. Vanity puffed up by fleshy mind, and not holding fast to the head. from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with increase that is from god colossians 2 18 and 19 the second part is new life through baptism buried with him in baptism in which you are now raised with him through faith in the working of god who raised him from the dead colossians 2 12 third part is christ brought an end to the old law by his death on the cross colossians 2 11 in him you were also circumcised the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by circumcision of christ The third important part is the moral and the practical advice in chapters three and four. A practical resurrection. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Colossians three one and two. Secondly, put off the old man. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth: fornication, uncleanness, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these uh, things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. Colossians three five. and 6 the character of the new man therefore as a elect of god holy and beloved put on tender mercies humility kindness meekness long suffering bearing with one another forgiving one another if anyone has a complaints against other even as christ forgave you so you must do instructions for christian household is uh, part 4 the wives submit your uh, to your own husbands as if fitting to the law colossians 3 18 Husbands love your wives and do not be bitter towards them Colossians 3:19. Fifth part is exhortation to pray continue earnestly in prayer being vigilant in with thanksgiving Colossians 4:2. The sixth part is proper and wise conduct walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time Colossians 4:5 and let your speech always be with grace seasoned with so that you may know how you ought to answer one another Colossians 4:6. And then the third part is final greeting and sign off uh, that is chapter 4 the salutation by my own hand Paul remembering my chains Grace be with you amen Colossians 4:18